Hi, I'm Eric Singer from the band KISS, as you can probably tell by my makeup. Grew up in Cleveland, Ohio, and I started off wanting to hit pots and pans around the house like the typical drummer story. And then I started taking lessons around 11 years old. And then by the time I was 14, uh, my father was a society band leader in the Cleveland area, and he de decided that you were going to be my drummer. And I'm like, oh, really? He's like, yep. So I kind of didn't really have much of a choice, so I got thrown into the fire. Um, but it turned out to be a good experience because I learned really quickly how to... Uh, adapt to different situations, playing with different musicians, how to develop my ear, to listening uh, to people improvising when they solo, and just being exposed to a lot of different types of music. You know, most of it, not the music that I wanted to play, not all of it, everything but rock and roll, basically. But um, just playing any kind of organized music is a great thing, I think, um, because it teaches you the basic fundamentals and foundation that you need for whatever kind of band or music that you play. So. Uh, I did that for many years and started playing original bands in my teenage years and then eventually I moved to California and uh, started playing with Lita Ford in 1983 and from there I ended up playing with Black Sabbath and Gary Moore, Badlands, Brian May from Queen Solo Band, even some Queen gigs and Alice Cooper for many years and of course where I'm at now, Kiss, which I've worked with them on and off for 18 years. I got started with Kiss um, basically in 1989, I was doing a record in New York with a band called Badlands and uh, one of the guys uh, that was managed by the same management company mentioned to me that Paul Stanley from KISS was doing a solo tour and needed a drummer and he wondered what I was doing and he recommended me for the gig and I went and met with Paul and uh, we had a chat and next thing I know he's tell telling people that I'm going to be the drummer on a solo tour. and. Uh, so that was my first introduction to any members of KISS and into the KISS family, if you will, because anytime you have any association to anything KISS, you become kind of part of the KISS world and KISS family. From that point, I you know, developed a friendship with Paul, and then Paul asked me to play in demos for him, which worked for KISS, but uh, you know, just his own songwriting demos, and then I ended up playing on the Revenge record in 1991 because Eric Carr had become unfortunately ill and they asked me to come in and pinch hit for him and then later on that year he passed away uh, sadly and they asked me to become the drummer of the band so that was the beginning of my actual official KISS journey and that was the end of 91 and then I was in the band for like five years before they did a reunion with makeup with the original band and then uh, I came back and started wearing makeup in 2001 for a few years and then you know, I played literally musical drum chairs uh, in the band, um, but uh, I've been back to stay since 2004, and everything's been great, and the band has this whole new fond resurgence and a whole new legion of fans. It's like now the kids and babies of the KISS fans are now our fans, and now it's become, you know, kids from 3 to 73 coming to the shows, and it's become like this kind of... Uh, all ages show that everybody seems like you have to see at least once in your life and it's almost like going to see Mount Rushmore or the Grand Canyon you know kiss is something you have to at least see once Kiss just did a new album this year called Sonic Boom it was the first studio record that Kiss has done in 11 years and we're real proud of it because it's something that we um, did more of the old-fashioned organic way. The band got together in a rehearsal room, worked up the riffs together, then went in the studio and put the tracks down. I played the drums live, no click tracks, just did everything in two or three takes. Um, you know, basically, we weren't making a retro album, but we were trying to do uh, the recording process in a way that was kind of like the way records were originally made. Choosing gear, I mean, I've, I've kind of, I, I never specifically necessarily choose 
um, a particular brand because of the band I was playing. I chose the gear because of the way it personally appealed to me, the sound, um, as well as sometimes the aesthetics, the look, because in a band like Kiss, I want things to have a certain type of look. Um, so Pearl's always been gracious about making me any kind of custom kit I want that will fit our stage show. But for me, ultimately, the stuff's got to hold up. I've got to like the gear. It's not about just having an endorsement and getting free gear for me. It's never has been. I've played Zildjian cymbals my whole life. My dad played a little bit of drums when I was a kid. And when I first started, he had some cymbals laying around the house that I was able to use with my first kit. And they were, of course, Zildjian. So I played Zildjian's for 40 years and, um, and Pearl drums for 25 years. So uh, I use the gear because it's what works for me. Um, in all situations and sometimes I adapt to the environment like if I'm recording at a particular cup of music or I'm playing a particular kind of band and I want a certain sound then I will get a certain type of drum size or shell or a certain type of Zildjian range uh, cymbals that will work for what I'm doing. Um, so the great thing is both those companies provide such a wide range and diversity of product that there's never anything that they don't have that doesn't work for what I need. And try, I always will try anything new that any of the companies are willing to provide just because I think that's part of you know, R&D, research and development. You need to like test the stuff out because it's really no good to a consumer if you don't at least know that it's roadworthy and that the guys that do it for a living, that play on records, that tour, know that the stuff not only holds up on the road but it actually works in a musical sense application wise. So. Um, you know, Zildjian's always been great about developing any of their products, whether it's cymbals or the sticks, and making sure that that stuff works before a consumer goes and buys it. And I think that that's really important. And, uh, you know, the great thing about being an artist or an endorsee is that you get to sometimes test market stuff and go, hey, yeah, that works for me, or no, it doesn't. And, you know, everybody has different needs and different likes and dislikes what they want out of products. So the great thing is you can find that maybe for one guy this doesn't work at all, but for another, genre or style of music something is exactly perfect and that's how you figure it out by actually test marketing it and you'd be surprised that sometimes a, like my signature snare drum from Pearl is a 10 ply maple drum six and a half and most people would think it's probably only applicable for a certain style of music um, but I, I've been told and found out later on that a lot of like speed metal and hardcore type drummers really like the drum because they like to crank it up and get that it's really loud has a lot of attack, and it's turned out that it was like the perfect drum for a style of music that I probably wouldn't have thought. Many times throughout my whole career, I've been asked by um, many people, not just drummers, but all people in, in, the, in the music business or that want to be involved in music, about you know what's, what's the formula for success or what can I do to try to uh, get from A to B. And one thing I've learned is, you know, advice is good in certain things, but I think in the music business, you know, nothing is better than being prepared, but I don't really believe there's anything such as good luck. There's an old saying that good, that good luck is really um, opportunity meets preparedness. In other words, you know, have your practicing routine down. If you're going to audition for a band, make sure you know the material, make sure you're really in the best shape you can playing wise and mentally and physically. And then when an opportunity does come into your life, you want to be able to take advantage of, of that opportunity in the best way. And the best way is to be prepared, ultimately. Be focused within yourself. Always be prepared and professional. And ultimately, if you have talent, it, it will shine through. You just have to just make sure you're ready when that opportunity knocks on your door.